Hey guys, it's Hink here. Today we're going to be talking about basically pumping, troubleshooting, how to get the most out of your pumping session, so stay tuned. Hey guys, Hink here. Today we're going to be discussing how to get the most out of your pumping routine, and so this is based on a question that I got asked. You know, I'll put it up here, or maybe here, um, but it says, what can cause somebody with a consistent pump routine not to see temporary gains slash progress after months, and what would you recommend to that person? We're going to break it down today. So the first thing I would recommend is that you watch my other videos on pumping. I have a pumping part one and a pumping part two here, guys. I break down this like in detail through the actual urologic data on actual like vacuum devices. Check that out, number one. What could be going wrong, number two? You're going in flaccid, okay? I've talked about this before. You need to be going in with at least some sort of blood in your chambers if you are going to be pumping, okay? The reason for this is a couple of different reasons. So first of all, pumping in principle works by pushing past your natural chamber size and expanding. So if you go in on your flaccid, number one, it's gonna take a lot of that negative pressure to actually develop and actually fill your actual chambers with blood and actually get to that internal pressure. So a lot of you guys might realize you go put it on the pump and you start pumping and the actual pressure it goes up to like let's say you pump up to five and then it gradually starts going down that's because your blood more blood is being drawn into the chambers of your penis and it causes the negative pressure to actually decrease and so you got to keep pumping up and so if we're talking just purely time under tension if you're going in flaccid it is you're wasting kind of half of that time accounting for the the internal chambers of your penis to reach that actual negative pressure okay if you going in flaccid more of that negative pressure is going to be used immediately to start drawing in extra fluid into like the soft tissues between your actual skin and your actual tunica so you're going to be more prone to edema number three is that Guys, the average erection is between four to five inches of mercury here, okay? And when you are actually engaged in intercourse, that internal pressure can actually increase to several hundred millimeters of mercury. And that's per quote right here. So we're talking, you can easily get into like the eight to 10 range. I won't say easily, um, but you can definitely get into, let's say six to 10 range of internal pressure just by engaging in normal sexual intercourse. We are trying to use pressure to expand past that maximum pressure. And so that's why I think you, number one, you wanna get an erection so you already have that internal pressure of let's say, you know, five inches of mercury. Some of the, a lot of papers I look at say around on average about 150 milligrams of mercury, which is about four inches of mercury, okay? But you wanna have the pressure to actually pump past your natural erection potential and start to actually expand the chambers. And this goes into the next point that, you know, if you're not getting any kind of growth, then you need to increase your pressure. And so, you know, here's a paper here, which I use to reference um, when I was talking about uh, the lysol oxidase locks. Okay, if you haven't seen that video, one of my favorite videos I've made, please check that out after this video. But they actually found, this is a quote, we found that 300 millimeters of mercury, which ends up being right at about 10 inches of mercury, uh, maybe just over that, with the anti-locks exhibited a larger penile lengthening effect than 200 milligrams of mercury and anti-locks. And so therefore we selected the pressure of 300 milligrams of mercury. And so here is the actual scientific paper that actually showed penile enlargement in rats. I understand that, but they're saying themselves, you need to use a high pressure to get the effects that you're looking for, okay? Once again, 300 millimeters of mercury is actually about 11.8 inches of mercury. I don't recommend that you actually pump quite that high, but I do think you need to gradually work up to about 10 inches of mercury, okay? Absolutely not for novices, it's not for people just starting out, but I do think you're gonna need to use more pressure if you want to see results. You know, me and like BD differ on this. At least last I, I heard, I don't wanna put words in his mouth, but he thinks the range, if I'm not mistaken, is somewhere between like five to seven, and I think that's even what a lot of the guides on getting bigger say. I disagree with that. I think you need to start with that and get a feel for it, and I think you need to gradually work up to about 10 inches of mercury, okay? Personally for me, I work up to about 10 inches, and even by my last set, sometimes I'm going into 12 inches of mercury, okay? That's also why you need to pump with the gauge, like what we have on peakmalephysique.com, and that happens to be the pump that I use. Why else? You're not actually pumping enough, and by enough, I mean you either don't have enough time under tension, if you're following the, like the BM, I don't wanna mention that company's rules, then you do like three minutes on, two minutes off. That's not enough for permanent gains, guys. I think a set should be at least, uh, basically, if you're doing like a more traditional pumping routine, it needs to be at least like three to four sets of five to seven minutes. That's typically what I recommend. So either you don't have enough time under tension or you don't have enough total time. And so I think the total time of like pressure exposed to your members should be about 
15 to 20 minutes, okay? If it's not, I don't think you're, you're doing enough. And so that can be whether you're interval pumping and you're doing like 10 sets of two minutes, that's fine too, but I do think you need about 20 minutes. Why else aren't you growing? Well, you're not maximizing your blood flow, okay? I've made videos on PDE5 inhibitors and I've talked about them from a health perspective, but especially when you're doing things that might increase your girth work, you wanna maximize blood flow to that area and you wanna maximize your erection quality. Some people choose to use something like Viagra Cialis. I think that that's you know, appropriate after you have a discussion with your doctor to determine if that's appropriate for you. But obviously guys, a citrulline-based supplement like our Vigor, it's an Amazon choice, okay? Um, I personally designed this. If you haven't seen my video on like what makes the best PE supplement, I break down every ingredient in here but you need some sort of citrulline based supplement even if you're not using vigor to maximize blood flow to the area maximize your erection maximize your pumping session okay the other reason is you might just not have given it enough time i know for me when i first started pumping i personally saw at least temporary gains usually within about within about two weeks i was able to notice some pretty quickly and i was like wow whose d is this kind of thing but um, really it took me about six to eight weeks before i started seeing any kind of like consistent flaccid gains and so i know that like I started all and I was like looking at like good looking loser stuff and he was like oh man with this pump you'll get this like massive warm flaccid that's like down your leg all day that's still not what I see to this day so you know I think he was maybe he just had a different experience than me but it did take about six to eight weeks before I started to see that okay and then what might also be why you're not seeing at least temporary gains you might just be a grower okay and what do I mean by that you have very high levels of elastin if you haven't seen my video on elastin and its importance in erection quality and penile health you need to watch that after this too but if you have high levels of elastin you're basically going to expand in the pump and then as soon as it's done your elastin is going to put you right back at your starting size okay it doesn't mean you can't grow it actually means you have more potential to actually elongate things like your flaccid but it might just be due to your elastin levels guys so guys those are the main reasons i appreciate you watching uh, please like and subscribe catch you on the next one peace